African countries. Ghana is seen as, as a, a friendlier place to live and to do business in. Ghana loves the foreigner, as one interviewee who's actually in this audience told Toby during their interview. And this is something that has been echoed to us amongst many other Ghanaian firms as well. The GLC provides professionals in the oil and gas industry a dynamic environment to meet and connect with peers and like minds. We exist to serve our members and to provide an array of events and networking sessions year-round to engage the niche petroleum industry. Mr. Asari Chair of the Petroleum Commission, I think I'd like to start with you. Currently, um, organizing the trip mission one was organized some time back to Aberdeen just to be able to link up um, potential local companies with the foreign ones. So that once um, that networking is done, when a company is coming to Ghana, they are aware that there's a pool of local companies that they can con contact for particular services. So, this is one of the initiatives that um, the commission is currently undertaking to support local companies so that um, when foreign companies come in, they can identify the very good ones and then partner with them to perform services. It's very important when you, when you get into Ghana, the oil and gas industry, to first of all, as uh, my colleague mentioned, to take great interest in regulations, particularly local content organization, how uh, you, you, you structure your uh, operations around compliance, but co it is very important that when you, to, to, to be successful, not just to focus on the minimum standards of compliance, but to go beyond that to see how you can also contribute to to uh, kind of achieve the policy uh, uh, drivers behind some of this uh, uh, <coughs> legislation. I think when it comes to a relationship with government for international companies, yes, you, you have that direct relationship, but sometimes government may not always be sure that what you are telling them is exactly what is. Um, and I always say that there's no government that um, does not want to be elected into power legitimately if they can be. Um, even your most ardent dictator wants to be loved and wants to feel loved. So I think what one, one, uh, companies need to realize the people that governments are listening to are their citizens. And what their citizens feed back to them is what's most important. It's not what you as a company say to the government. It's what the citizens are feeding back to them. If you take a country like Singapore, for example, Singapore are not known uh, for producing oil or gas but across the Asian region, it has become an oil and gas hub, um, such that the plethora of infrastructure that they put in place to allow them to position themselves to take advantage of being the go-to country when it comes to oil, gas, and all the attendant uh, services that go around, um, uh, that go with the, the oil and gas sector. So when you are refining um, and the, the, the number that the government, uh, the Ministry of Energy was, was looking at was I think 600,000 barrels. When you are um, refining so close to your production, you're already making some significant savings because you don't have to pay for transport. So one, you, if you save on transport, you refine close by and then you also send to, to neighboring countries that are landlocked, then you're already having some significant savings that can allow you some um, competitive advantages. Lots of them. The, the government is probably the largest employer in Ghana, if I'm not mistaken. So they will have to play a part in it. They will have to participate in it. They will have to have that sense of ownership. How exactly they do it is up to them. I think the most efficient way will be through a series of tax incentives and uh, that sort of, um, you know, attracting, making it, you know, you know attractive for uh, uh, other companies to bring the, the money in. Um, that to me, and, they, and it has to be a long-term approach. You know, we, as Toshin said, we, we start all these good uh, programs and halfway through, you know, one reason or the other, we somehow have to pull out. So we need to have the stomach for it and we need to understand it's going to take a while.
to reap the benefit. Dangote will build his refinery. Ghana hopefully will do something soon in the next within the next decade. But there'll be there'll be diverse opportunities for everyone to exploit. But there's no point in doing that if we still um, continue in the same line as uh, a refinery that's not been working properly, Tamawa refinery, without, without criticizing anyone. But it will be a good thing if it drives up quality so that that competition means that we're trying to better the other without bringing the other down.